Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So we're gonna be doing another video today on former hoof application. We have um, Vinny. Vinny is a, an ex-racehorse. Uh, he's thoroughbred um, and he's ha been having a few, few problems with his feet. We've tried a few different shoeing packages. Um, he actually developed cor a corn at one stage um, um, about a month ago now. So we've been treating the corn. Hopefully we're on top of that. Um, Lauren's going to give you a little bit of a sort of backstory of why we're here today and why we're applying the former hoof. So Lauren, over to you. So um, last November is when we got Vinny from Ascot Sales, um, typical sort of flat foot to thoroughbred feet. Um, we, he's gone through a bit of a transition stage between racehorse over to competition horse and he's just, like Alex said, had a corn and been quite sore in his feet. So. Um, although we've tried to do a couple of things to try and help his feet up to now, we just think that former hoof is now going to be the best thing for him to give him all the support he needs and hopefully let his feet grow through so then hopefully he can be the competition horse he's supposed to be. Brilliant. So if we just have a little look, if we just go over and have a little look at his feet, you can see what we're talking about. Typical thoroughbred feet, he's very sort of collapsed in the heels. You can see how we get this sort of underrun heel here and it really wraps underneath him. Um, if we look at this other front, quite dished, quite a large flare to these feet. If we just have a look at the solar aspect. So this was the foot where we had the corn. So we had a, a deep corn in here. I'll actually upload a picture and you can see how soft that was, but it's hardened up quite nice now. So we want to make sure that we're protecting that before we put the former hoof on there. Um, and what that former hoof is going to do is going to pr provide a load of protection to the bottom of the foot. And it's also going to help those angles, going to lift them heels up a fraction. Um, giving them a load of strength in those walls also so we've gone over um gone over the foot with the rasp now just to clean it up we're not going to try and we're not going to take too much um hoof off there we want to keep plenty of strength we just want to um clean it up make sure we're going to get a good nice clean surface for a good adhesion with the former hoof um so we're going to be using the size 4 performance mold today performance mold is actually got a rim uh, where a shoe can be applied we're not actually going to be applying a shoe to them though we're going to be leaving him with just the former hoof um, and we're going to be applying a particular color Lauren which color would you like definitely going to go for the purple brilliant cool right let's get on with it so how long will you want this That's on not red handle rust please because of what they do um, We'll probably leave them on as long as we possibly can. Yeah. One of the problems with shoes is you get long and you get, so you get long toe low heels. Yeah. Right. But with the former hoof, you don't get that because, and the reason you get that with the shoes is because the toe, nothing, the toe's not wearing away, yeah. but the heels are moving all the time on the shoes. So the heels tend to wear down and you get that sort of derotation of the pedal bone and the whole hoof capsule. So this will allow Especially when they go like, what you you won't get that with the former hoof so what you'll find is he'll wear through the toe yeah. within time because it is plastic yeah. he'll wear through the toe but it will keep that sort of nice upright hoof past an axis those good angles which is ideal so so this basically allows his feet to still grow doesn't keep them in like a shoe would and restricting yep yeah. it'll wear like a natural barefoot so he'll wear the toe off yeah. don't worry about it absolutely fine um, just try and keep them on as long as we possibly can and we'll get when we come to take them off we'll have plenty of hoof growth underneath them good sole thickness um, and hopefully better hoof angles to play with so Okay, so what we've just done there is we've tried to take away as much of this um, flare as he's got here. And we want to try and achieve a nice sort of Mustang roll, typical barefoot trim. 
um, get a nice bevel on there. The, the bigger we can get that bevel, the more material, the more form a hoof that's actually going to fill there, and you're going to get as much wear out of them as you possibly can. Um, so what we're going to do, wire brush it up, we're going to put, put some dental impression material down either side of the frog here and the central cleft, just because the former hoof does get quite hard and quite firm, and what we don't want is any, any of that digging in into these, into these frogs. So we'll pack it with a blue dental impression material, it's about 15 sure hardness, so it's quite soft, um, and then we'll go ahead with the application. So we always make sure that we put some WD-40 in our mold, just helps protect your mold and also makes it nice and easy for, for when you come to remove it off the foot. So we'll pop all that in. Um, we'll take our magic purple dust and we will, now that we've put the, the WD-40 in there, it will actually stick to the sides. I do realize Vinny is a gelding, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so that's in there ready to go. We've got the dental impression material mixed. Um, so that's still got a few more minutes. So what we need now is we need some cloth. Scissors, please. And this cloth just adds strength to the former hoof, the actual plastic, once, it's, once we remove the mold. So we try and make sure that that's trimmed pretty much the size of the foot. Yeah? Yeah. No, give me more. Give me more. Okay, hold up there now. Ready to go. So we've got our mold, we've got the glitter, we've got our dental impression material, we've got our mesh. What we're going to do is just fold it over now so it fits nicely onto the foot. Got the gun ready, we've got an extra um, nozzle. It's all about having a process, having a system and everything to hand. Makes the job nice and easy. Okay, so we're going to go for it now. So this is just starting to get firm, so I'm going to pop that now around the frog. We work that down into the clefts. That's it. Okay, then we're gonna, before I do that, sorry, I'm going to spray it. So we're gonna use some of the antibacterial spray that doesn't work, there we go. Some of the antibacterial spray that former hoof supply. So pop that down there, and then we're gonna mold this dental impression into those, into that void, into the medial and lateral cleft of the frog and central sulci. So pop that on. We're then gonna pop on our mesh. Our mesh is gonna go over the toe. And we wanna make sure that we've got nice coverage up the wall there. So I fold it over there, trying to keep it flat. This is the tricky part now, is to get the foot into the mold without moving the mesh too much. The, tr the tricky thing with these thoroughbreds feet is they're quite wide. There we go, let's let him stand on it. Come on Vinny, stand on that buddy. And you'll watch how he sits in. And you want to make sure he's sitting in nice and you've got good heel coverage. So when I said I had an extra nozzle, I used the nozzle just to push all that mesh in. Really pack it down all the way around and it's fine to have that bit sticking out the back by the heels. Make sure your, tr your, your, your mold's released all the way around, okay? So then you need your extra pair of hands. So what we're going to do is we're just going to purge a bit out. Purging just allows that mixture to mix in the nozzle. That's probably plenty. And we're going to actually go for the toe first. So Kendall's going to push in there with his thumb and we're going to inject in. How are we looking? So just pull that up, get it to start, and push it back down. Okay, so we're in. We then we're going to do the sole first and we're watching we can see through that mold it's a nice warm day today so we're just watching how that liquid moves around that solar aspect of the foot and i'm just following it up the foot keep pumping
Okay, pop it down. Okay. Pick up the leg. I'm going to replace this tube just as we were waiting there. It tends to set in the nozzle. We've actually just used one full tube to pretty much get a full application on that foot. Um, we'll take the mold off and the beauty of it is if we're not happy or we've missed a particular area we can pop that mold back on and we can use uh, another tube and fill that area if needs be and on average we're probably using between a tube and a quarter to tube and a half per foot to get a really good uh, application. <laughs> Okay, so we just nip these little injection points away. And it's just a tidying process now, just to sort of get a lovely finish. But so far, it's looking good from a solar aspect. Pop it down on the floor. Check that out. Okay, there we have it. Former hoof application. On to the next one. Tidies up the second foot. What are your initial thoughts on the former hoof, Laura? Well, I think actually they're not as bulky as I thought they'd be, mm -hmm. which is cool. Um, I wasn't sure how they were going to sit and how they were going to look because I didn't worry in making too many changes to a foot if you don't know what it's going to be like. But actually, they're quite slimline and they, they're just a layer around the foot, aren't they? So they look good so far. So they do get a little bit bulky, so you do get that sort of added few millimetres sort of thickness on the wall. But I think as long as you tidy up quite well, um, it, as you said, they don't actually look too bulky. No. So yeah, brilliant. Turn it for me, please. Got an invisible 
Barefoot, almost. barefoot yeah. yeah, and a comfortable barefoot as yeah. well. Yeah, I think one of the things you've got to take um, into consideration, especially if you were thinking of riding them now, is his angles have all changed. Yeah. So bear that in mind. I wouldn't then recommend going into sort of any hard work. Hard yeah. work. Just bring it. You know, do a little bit of like work, getting walking, uh, trotting a bit again, and then um, and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. But yeah, just give him that, that window of time just to get used to them. You do change so much, and it puts you know where he's had those sort of low heels, just putting all that strain on his tendons and then next minute we've, we've yeah. lifted them up. So. And already it looks like he's, he's putting his feet down and he's walking how he should be, whereas yeah. before he was just so he was uncomfortable. So, yeah, he was and, so short. Yeah. Now it looks like he's actually striding out yeah. much, much more, more comfortable and happy. So brilliant. Let's see how he goes and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably check back. Uh, we'll do a review on him in maybe six weeks, something like that. Brilliant. Good cool. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay guys, so that's a, um, another form of hoof video. Um, we, we came to do this horse today because he was, um, you quite saw, thoroughbreds don't tend to um, manage too well being barefoot unless they've been able to transition correctly and with a lot of management. Um, it may be an option for this horse to actually take him barefoot after the form of hoof application, so we'll play it by ear. We'll see how we get on, but yeah, there you go. So thanks for watching and we'll see you on another video. Take it easy.